Hey, everybody, welcome to Bubble Man's World. You know, here's where we dive into the vibrant universe of cannabis culture. And tonight we're thrilled to introduce a new segment, the Cannabis Journal Club, hosted by none other than Dr. David Allen and myself, Bubble Man. Dr. Allen is not just any guest. He's a retired cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon who has also served as a professor specializing in the endocannabinoid signaling system. With his extensive background, Dr. Allen brings a very unique perspective to the table, enriched by his experience as a veteran of the drug war. Join us as we explore the latest in cannabis research policy and science with Dr. David Allen on the Cannabis Journal Club. Welcome, David. Good morning, or good afternoon now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's good morning, Thank good afternoon, good me. evening. There's people all over the world, so let's hit them all. All right. Wonderful. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about the mother of all cannabinoid patents. Is that correct? Perfect. Please give us give us the the knowledge. All right, um, I'm going to give it a, a brief review of the mother of all cannabis patents, and uh, it's it's entitled "Cannabinoids as Antioxidants and Neuroprotectants," patent number six million six hundred thirty thousand five hundred seven. It came out in October seventh of two thousand three, and um, we're reviewing patents and uh, scientific articles about cannabis. And, and the reason we're re reviewing patents is because the patent office is the keeper of the truth because you can't make any mistakes uh, on a, a patent application and get a patent number assigned to it. So it, in effect, is the keeper of the truth. And um, this cannabis patent, um, six comma. 630,507 came out in October 7th of 2003 uh, and was issued from uh, by the Department of Health and Human Services, which means this is a United States patent. Uh, and uh, it proves in this that it decreases the size of a stroke by half or 50%. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this patent... Uh, <clears throat> prove this by doing an experimentation on rats where they occluded uh, a middle cerebral artery of the rats for a time period and opened the artery and then looked at the brains afterwards and found out that, that the, the size of the stroke was 50% smaller. And so that's hard scientific evidence that this works in an animal model. And it's kind of a sin that this has not been tested in humans since 2003 because uh, everybody going to the hospital with a stroke or heart attack might have had their uh, mortality, morbidity improved by taking CBD or, or THC. And this proves uh, in this that THC and CBD both are uh, efficacious in decreasing the size of a stroke and they prefer CBD, of course, because it doesn't fully bind to the CB1 receptor and therefore it doesn't get you high, whereas C THC does bind to the receptor and, and gets you high, and that would change your neurological examination. So um, CBD doesn't bind onto the CB1 receptor uh, very strongly, and THC mm. does. I have a question. Yes. What is the comparable medication for the reduction of stroke after these operations? Do they have, because I remember Dr. Brent Reynolds telling me about like uh, tumor medications that shrink tumor in like, they shrink the maximum, they shrink it as 10%. They cause neuropathy in like 85% of the patients. So they have to stop taking it. And this drug does billions of dollars in profit annually. And in right. the meantime, the comparable, like the apoptosis cannabinoids yeah. is like whoa the com so is there a comparable medication because when yeah. you say 50 percent, that's obviously a massive number or pe maybe people well, aren't hearing it that's pretty profound from the well, heart surgeon's perspective no well, i don't want to talk about oncologists because they're the enemy mm. uh but uh so um So what was your question again? <laughs> just just whether there was a medication that offered oh, this okay. lack of stroke. All right. 
So there are some other things, vitamin C and other things that are antioxidants, but they don't generally cross the blood brain barrier where CBD and THC does and so has good penetration. And this, this patent is, is based on the scientific evidence that CBD and THC both stop reperfusion injury. And we'll go into that uh, in another uh, segment of our uh, articles. But uh, basically, when you, when you stop blood flow to an organ, uh, the cells that are farthest away from the blood supply die first. So the center of the, the stroke starts from the very center. And then there's a surrounding area of cells that are stunned. But if you return the blood flow to them, they'll return. They'll, they'll, they're still alive, but the center is, is dead. But the surrounding tissue is, is um, hindered. And, it, it's, it, it's, and what happens in, in strokes is, is when you reap, when you restore the blood flow to an area that's been cut off from blood supply, what happens is uh, some chemical processes that make the stroke worse. And it's called reperfusion injury. And what happens is uh, when you put the blood flow back to the area that's been denied oxygen and blood, what happens is there's a massive release of a neurotransmitter called glutamate. And it's a, it's a neurotransmitter and it, it does some harmful things. What it does is it causes calcium to go into the cell, which kills the additional cells and makes, makes the stroke worse. It's called reperfusion injury. And that was my job as a heart surgeon to prevent reperfusion injury. And when I read this patent the first time, it, it had some information that it really changed my life as a heart surgeon. And it says in here that uh, CBD and THC, I'm paraphrasing, is, uh, can be used for Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Down syndrome, HIV, myocardial infarction, or treatment and prevention of intraoperative or perioperative hypoxic insults that can leave permanent strokes, basically. Uh, and following open heart surgery requiring heart lung bypass machines, such as coronary artery bypass grafts, cabbage. So I read this back right after 2003 and I knew, wow, man, this is like a miracle. And I couldn't tell any of my fellow doctors about this because it was out me as uh, somebody that was promoting the cannabis science. And so I really, I was afraid to even share this with other doctors because it would affect my income. And so. Um, Maybe your freedom next, too. Yeah. And um, so this information is actually hidden in the literature because this scientific uh, literature basically requires you to have a biochemistry uh, degree so you can interpret the gibberish that is in this patent. So 90% of the people that would read this patent wouldn't know what they read unless they uh, were told what to look for. Uh, and so that's what we're here for. We're here to interpret scientific jargon into easily consumable language that most people can understand. And once they get educated in this hidden information, they're going to be able to affect the world in a way that will make this even more widespread. So, uh, so that's what our goal here is, is to, to, spread the information that's hidden in the scientific jargon and make it easily consumable so you, you can tell your doctor about this. And I can bet anybody is watching this, 
if you ask your doctor or heart surgeon if they know about this cannabis patent, cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants, they won't have any idea uh, about its ex existence. And uh, so you will be able to teach your doctors about this, and this will change society. Agreed. So to do a quick, short breakdown on the things that Dr. David Allen just broke down from this patent, you've got the antioxidant properties, which ca cannabinoids have been identified as having antioxidant properties independent of NMDA receptor antagonisms, making them potentially useful in treating a variety of oxidation-associated diseases. We have neuroprotective applications, which is the patent specifically notes, which Dr. David Allen just spoke about, the potential of cannabinoids in limiting neurological damage post ischemic events like stroke and in treatment neurodegenerative diseases yeah. such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and HIV dementia. Then you've got the non-psychoactive cannabinoids, which emphasizes the use of non-psychoactive cannabinoids like CBD for their benefits without the psychoactive effects that come with high doses of THC, thus avoiding toxicity issues. And then finally, the research uh, and potential. You know, this document includes data from experiments showing that cannabinoids like CBD can act as potent antioxidants with some efficacy superior to traditional antioxidants like uh, ascorbate or alpha tocopherol uh, in yeah. certain contexts. So is that kind of a good breakdown on what we're saying? That's exactly right. And so, uh, and CBD, this, this patent proves that CBD is safe in large doses, extremely large doses, even if you give it chronically, it doesn't have any side effects to it. Yeah. And if um, you didn't miss the major hypocrisy of this, being the U.S. government, the patent stands out because it acknowledges the medical potential of cannabis compounds while the plant itself remains classified under restrictive legal categories in many, many regions. It's federally illegal exactly. almost throughout the entire United States, except maybe in LV Musica's uh, living room. Now, that's that's exactly right. So. There it is. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in for our first episode of the Cannabis Journal Club. We'll get a little smoother as we go along. We'll figure out how Dr. David and I are going to bounce off one another. And uh, we're going to continue to bring you great information like this. If you have information that you want us to cover, you can reach out to me at bcbubbleman at icloud.com. And please, if you haven't already, join to be a member for the Cannabis Journal Club. We're going to be doing question and answers, and we're going to be doing shows at least weekly. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, thank you, Dr. David Allen, for sharing your wisdom with us today. My pleasure. Bye for now.